everybody, I'm Arpana Mehta. Uh, so everybody gets confused with my name, it's, it's Arpana and I would like to correct that in the first place. Uh, secondly, uh, I think the intro is done, I work with digital native customers and uh, basically the task for me is to help them solve their business challenges using the technical solutions and tools offered by Google Cloud. So uh, one of the paradigms, one of the technologies that I am seeing a, a good adoption with is serverless and uh, that is what I'm going to talk about today, how you can use serverless to optimize their productivity and use it to uh, utilize your precious time to focus on the most important bits of your application. Why is serverless so popular? In one single line, it's because uh, of how quickly it lets, your, uh, let you, lets you take your ideas into production and also uh, while giving you the lowest cost of ownership throughout the app dev life cycle. You are just responsible for your application. So let's get started. Here's a quick look at the agenda. We'll have a brief view of what and why of serverless. Then uh, we'll do a deep dive on Google's managed compute platform, Cloud Run. Then we'll do a prayer to the demo gods and uh, I'll show you how you can do continuous deployment with GitHub on Cloud Run. Uh, so whenever you push your code, the latest code is available uh, in your uh, you know, production environment without you having to do anything because continuous deployment and we'll try to leave some time for Q&A as well. Uh, I'll be taking questions through the demo as well, so we'll have enough time. Uh, quick uh, you know, plug in here, we also have a cloud hero challenge going on at the booth which is uh, one of the topics is cloud run again, so you may want to pay attention to the demo more than anything because uh, there are exciting prizes there and top six winners get prizes there as well. Quick show of hands here, how many of you uh, have heard of serverless already? Okay, uh, a lot of you. And uh, how many of you are using serverless tools and think they are pretty cool? Awesome. Okay, I think uh, the demo is very much needed then if you are not using serverless tools right now. So if this was a few years ago, I would be giving my audience an extensive definition of serverless, talking about how it is not the absence of servers. But right now it has gained significant traction. I see a lot of my own customers use serverless and we have got the value prop. It is about manage, compute, platform. You don't have to worry about managing infrastructure. That, that's put very simply. This is called the responsibility pyramid here. Whatever uh, is on your level and on top of it is sort of your responsibility. Not sort of, it is your responsibility. So on-prem, the internet connectivity, procuring hardware, uh, maintaining that hardware, the security, the physical security of that hardware is your responsibility. Uh, as you move up to cloud, you give these responsibilities to the cloud provider and you are, you know, responsible for patching your own infra that you have, uh, you know, asked for to be provisioned from cloud. You have to take care of your own ops. That's the responsibility of cloud when uh, you've moved from on-prem to cloud. But as we move from cloud to serverless, as you can see, this blue section is now your responsibility and the rest is managed by the cloud provider. In this case, fully managed by Google. So, uh, you know, when I need 100 VMs and my application has scaled to million requests per second instead of when I just started out when I needed one VM, it's the responsibility for my, uh, for my cloud provider to give me those many VMs. But the additional feature is I don't have to patch, I don't have to worry about that VM security. All I care about is my application code and the performance of it. See, I would have my own metrics about a performance. I would say I need 99.99% availability, so I need to have these measures in my application. These two things become your responsibility and the rest, you know, uh, scaling up, uh, scaling down as well to save you costs. Uh, of course, procuring hardware, all of this is managed by Google Cloud for you. So that's, that's a concept for all, uh, you know, the whole serverless paradigm and not just for serverless on Google Cloud, this is a concept overall. So as, uh, as you can see, this is why serverless came into picture. So up until a few years ago, uh, there became two ways to run cloud native apps. Uh, Kubernetes was the de facto for containers and serverless was just function that service at the point of time. That, hey, I have this code piece, put it on cloud, put it on a serverless tool, get it running. The second bit was Kubernetes, I have a container, put it on Kubernetes, write some uh, YAML files, get it running. Uh, of course, the process sounds short, uh, short here, but we all know how uh, difficult it can be to uh, self-manage a Kubernetes cluster. So there were two ways 
uh, serverless was is incredibly powerful because it was letting things uh, go very quickly into production. Uh, we just were managing code. And Kubernetes gives you that great, incredible granularity and control over your code. So both of these things were popular because of this flexibility containers provide. Containers uh, were becoming a way of uh, packaging code. Kubernetes was the de facto for uh, running your containers. So there's one side which is containers and how flexibly, how po how portable they are, how flexibly you can run your apps. And the other side was the velocity and ease of serverless. So Devil, the developers uh, at this stage when serverless is just functions as a service and Kubernetes is the way for running containers, uh, developers were divided into a dilemma of what to choose because everybody wants flexibility. You want to know that I'll be able to change things. I don't have to have a rigid configuration and I'll be able to use any binary, any language, any library. So containers were, you know, very uh, appealing at that point and serverless for the velocity. Uh, because of this dilemma that what should I choose, uh, developers started to look for platforms that were more than just functions as service. They wanted to run serverless containers and not just simple uh, problems uh, that serverless was solving. And that's why we introduced serverless containers. Cloud Run is uh, a Google Cloud serverless uh, platform which is letting you run containerized application on uh, top of uh, serverless. You give it a container, it can be a complex application, it can have, a, it can be a three tier architecture and you can build it on top of Cloud Run. So that's powerful now that it's so easy plus uh, you're also able to build complex solution now. Serverless with Cloud Run is truly about having that developer flexibility but also having the ease of serverless. Uh, if you want to get get examples, you could go to deploy stack. Just do a quick Google search for deploy stack. You would get uh, various architectures that are uh, pre-built Terraform scripts for you. You could just run them with one click and maybe change the code in these uh, to your own bit. Let's say I want to have a blog. Just giving a very simple example. It could have a front end. It could have a database with uh, maybe blog titles, some metadata, and the whole write up. This could be an example, right? And I could pick the Terraform script from deploy stack which is a very com I mean which has examples of very complex architectures and just replace it with my environment variables, my files and then I could get going. Uh, this deploy stack is to show you that uh, you know serverless is no more about single piece of code files or just event trigger task. It's about complex applications now. In fact the uh, the response to this serverless paradigm cloud run has been so incredible that in just one year this is April 2020 to 21's data, the number of containers deployed on Cloud Run has tripled. So uh, you can see how quickly uh, Cloud Run is being adopted because of the use case. Uh, up until now, uh, a few days actually, just uh, two days ago, we uh, made generally available Cloud Run jobs. So a lot of my customers were running asynchronous tasks as well, not just like serving websites, but also ML jobs in the background or data processing, real time data processing and now we are you know in the age of AI, there's, everything is about data. So uh, data processing has becoming a big uh, chunk of our responsibilities whether you're doing what, whatever you know your application is doing. So uh, when Cloud Run became GA, uh, Cloud Run jobs became GA, Cloud Run was about services, click on it, get the, get the access to this service. But with Cloud Run jobs, you could have a job running asynchronously in the background, monitor it, delete it when it's done. So, and uh, imagine having, you know, jobs like that are running for six, seven hours, okay? Data processing could be taking time about six, seven hours, uh, having meeting da heavy meeting data that you're analyzing, anything. So, this uh, six, seven hour bit earlier, you would need to break it into, you know, uh, smaller files, stitch it together, put an HTTP server in front of it and then, uh, then run it as a job somewhere. Uh, if you do it in Kubernetes, you would uh, run the job, uh, expose it as a ser service to have a HTTPS endpoint. But with jobs now, you keep give your code to Cloud Run and let the job run, delete it when it's done. You don't need an HTTPS server or need to break into break your files into smaller files and stitch them together. It's just one job and the maximum time is 24 hours now, uh, which is a lot for even analyzing a big amount of data. I've talked about Cloud Run now. I don't want to do any more talking, but to show you in the console of uh, 
we have discussed the use cases as well uh, just just reiterating the bit it could be your website it could be lightweight data processing up until now it was lightweight but with jobs you could do heavy data processing it could be uh, your api backend or it could be used to automate various tasks in your architecture uh, you could have a workflow with different elements and you could put triggers in front of cloud run to automate that whole process workflow give you a real life example media market is uh, europe's largest uh, electronic consumer uh, uh, retailer and uh, when they moved from on prem to cloud uh, they found that it was very easy to build with cloud it was very quick to build with cloud so uh, and that this was all on gke at that point of time because of that success they wanted to try google cloud uh, for some other deployments as well which was a new workload now this workload uh, of course gke is great but it takes some time right kubernetes takes time so does gke and that's why they tried this this time they tried google's fully managed compute platform this which is cloud run uh, they were able to get to the market eight times faster able to serve 145% more traffic during covid and uh, with 40% redu cost reduction so this is how powerful cloud run was for them uh, another example could be khan academy if you've heard and watched tutorials of the same thing so uh, during uh, covid itself online education became a thing and uh, khan academy also used cloud run to deploy their newer videos and serve that huge or traffic which was during covid everything was online so uh, khan academy was an early adopter of cloud run and uh, it could see the success uh, with cloud run uh, this is the complete life cycle app development life cycle i am sure a lot of you would be familiar with it already to have everybody on the same page just the same uh, basic uh, you know blocks you will have in any app dev life cycle but i would like to talk about the products here as well so the first step is of course your source code you would have it in your local machine you could have it on github github enterprise bitbucket gitlab wherever it is the first step is to have your code with you uh, and with tools like cloud code and cloud build what happens is developers can write this code locally test it locally build the images locally and deploy it to cloud run locally as well without the intervention of any devops team so you don't you don't need to teach somebody uh, who is writing python code that you need to learn yaml files as well they they'll be able to do and manage all of it just with cloud code so cloud code is an integration with visual studio code and we all know how visual studio code is a very popular ide the it has integration with intellij as well so that's what that was about cloud code basically have your code with you the second step is about build that is you would have certain steps uh if you if you've tried github you would know there are certain actions that you run to build your code to take your code to, from uh, source code and pack it into a container the uh, of course not uh, just uh, cloud build is not the only solution you could have you could use uh, build packs you could use docker as well docker is a very popular uh, build tool then you could also use github actions uh if you have uh, your code running on multiple environments like you have your uh, code on aws if you want to deploy on uh, oracle if you want to deploy on azure and google cloud you could have github actions in place so what github github actions does is it is compatible with all clouds uh, specifically for cloud google cloud cloud build has all the runners available there uh, it's i would say the integration is easier but if you have multiple clouds you could go with github actions so that was about build the next thing is packaging and then storing everything that you build will result in some artifacts these artifacts are stored in the artifact registry uh, just like how you have docker uh, uh, docker hub right where you can store your own container images and deploy them similarly uh, artifact registry uh, is for storing the artifacts that were built during uh, the build process wherever the build ran whether it is uh, on github actions or cloud build you could set the uh, target as artifact registry there's also a container registry available uh, which is where it is it's just google cloud's version of storing your containers but the benefit of having your containers in container registry is that uh, there's a vulnerability scan going on all the time and uh, you know how there are vulnerabilities coming along and we find out later that this is a situation so even if a vulnerability is found later on uh, a container registry will notify you about that and you could be deploying only uh safe and secure containers to the final platforms here which is 
cloud run or Kubernetes engine. I have just included uh, GK here to say that anything that is a container could be deployed straight from the container registry or artifact registry to cloud run or Kubernetes engine. You do not have to build twice for the same thing. For the sake of this talk of course, our focus is cloud run. Uh, if you would like to talk about con uh, Kubernetes engine and we have two stand modes available here, standard and autopilot. Autopilot is more hands on and uh, standard is more control to you with your nodes available to you. So, if you would like to discuss any of these platforms, I am hanging out at the booth today. We could discuss Kubernetes there as well. And the last bit, uh, this is all day one, right? You typed your code, you built the code and then deployed it. Then comes day two operation. You can't stop with just one deployment. Of course, you will have edits, you will have uh, frequent changes, you will have bugs to fix. So, all of these things are come under operate. Now, cloud run is natively integrated with cloud monitoring and logging. So, you do not have to have a third party dashboard that you set up yourself, maybe even set up a, a, a different VM for Prometheus or Grafana. You can have those logs and uh, metrics available straight from monitoring in the cloud console itself. And we will look at that in the demo as well. So, let me just move to uh, the demo now. Again, uh, one thing to point out is I am going to write a blog on this same demo, so you can try it out on your own as well. Uh, it will be out on my blog, you can follow me there to just uh, try it, if you would like to try the demo that we are doing here on your own. And I hope it is super simple, so you are excited to start it. Uh, okay, I will change my screen to the demo then. I am going to the cloud, uh, okay, I am going to the cloud console right now. This is Google Cloud's home page. Because we are deploying on cloud run, I am going to search for cloud run. I already have a service over here, uh, but let us start fresh. So, as you see here, this is an option to create service if I zoom down further and there is an option to create a job. We will go create a service because uh, we will be deploying a web page and with an HTTPS endpoint. So, uh, you could see there are two options over here deploy one revision from an existing container image, that is one thing, but because uh, we want to be deploying new revisions from a source repository. Now, my source repository is GitHub. In your case, it could be anything uh, like Bitbucket or your local machine. I am going to select this, clicking on setup build. And this is what, uh, this is not that I am following these steps and you would have to follow different steps of production. This is the steps that you would follow in production as well. Uh, my repository provider is listed over here, it is GitHub. I am selecting my repo. Uh, my source code is in this repo say hi to cloud run, I will just show you this report quickly as well. Uh, okay. okay, this is the repo, alright, and I have a docker file in the uh, root folder itself. So, uh, I am using a docker file for the build steps, this could have been a cloud build YAML or a GitHub action file, whatever you would want to use to build your uh, uh, container. Uh, this is a Go application, uh, basic stuff over here and then the command to run it. So, this is my repo and I say next over here after selecting the branch. Now, it says main over here, if you could see that uh, my main branch is master, right? this is an old repo, so the main branch name is master, now it is main I know. Uh, so, I would select master, you just have to make sure that you are selecting the branch that you would want to deploy on when you push code. So, uh, I let us say your developers create 10 branches in the repo, but you want to only deploy the code that is merged into the master branch. So, you select this master branch, uh, I am selecting build type docker file because as we saw the docker file, this is the location in the root, that is it. I click on save, selected the region. CPU allocation only allocating it during request processing, so you do not have to pay when you are not processing any requests or your container is idle. Uh, minimum number of instances just to avoid cold start sometime. Uh, okay, this is about traffic and this is also about security. Uh, if you only want to, if you want to make an internal application, you should select internal here. Uh, see, this is just with the UI that you are able to select and manage what kind of traffic you want to have. And if you want to allow, uh, you know, if you want to have a public website, you could select all here. We are building a public one, so here selecting all. Uh, I am allowing unauthenticated invocation because I do not want to check for a bearer token right now for the sake of this demo. Uh, if you, if I want to have authentication, I could use the second option and then we could integrate with OAuth or JWT to get a token and then only 
get access uh, to the service. I am creating create, clicking on create. See, uh, the message over here says the cloud bill trigger will be created once you create the service. So, this trigger is created in the background for you. When you push code, the trigger will run in your GitHub repo. If I go back to my GitHub repo, let us say. See, there is this dot appearing over here. Clicking on this dot, this trigger is running. If I click on details, it's saying this is in progress. If I want to see more uh, details about this build, it will show me all the steps. Okay, this is my other profile. <coughs> Selecting the project that I'm running in. So the, these are the build steps running. The first step is build. The second step is push, deploy. This is what we saw in the uh, pipeline as well, which I just displayed uh, a while ago in the slides. So, uh, the build step is done over here showing the newest entries here and it is now pushing. Let us go back to our cloud run console. As you can see it has set the IAM policies, created a placeholder revision. So, placeholder revision is just to uh, help you troubleshoot. It is a uh, revision that cloud build deploys on its own. So, when you run into an error, it will have some steps for you to troubleshoot just in case a deployment fails. Uh, see, right now I do not have the uh, service running, I just have the placeholder one. So, let us have a quick look at this URL that is created. This is the HTTPS endpoint already created for you. My service is not up, so it has given me some issues that something went wrong, continuous deployment has been set up, but your repository has failed to build and deploy. Let us give it a minute more. This is pending and okay. Now, you can see the second service that came up. This is our service that we want to be able to serve to our users. Now, this is serving 100 percent traffic. Let us go back to this URL again. As you can see, uh, it has successfully deployed the container image. Now, uh, if I want to just to showcase how quickly we can make, you know, changes and deploy again, I will just update the file directly from here in the interest of time. This is my index HTML and let me edit because let us, I will close this one. Let us say I do not like this blue color and I want to try a green deployment. If you get the hint, I am trying to show you blue-green blue deployment. Uh, yeah, so let just making a very small change over here, calling it add green deployment and committing. So now when I commit it, again there should be a trigger to uh, deploy this newest code and you should see that once it is deployed, this successfully from blue should change to green. So, again this is a trigger running, this is in progress, we go back here, I mean you do not have to be here all the time. Uh, even if you just see build history over here, the first build was successful and now second one is in progress if I refresh this page. See build is again in progress and this is about versioning as well. I have version 1 running again and I am deploying version 2 using the build. This is done automatically, I just push my code and I am just waiting on the screen. Uh, build takes how much ever time your container takes to start up. Uh, this is not some time that is cloud run is adding. If your container takes a minute to start up, it will take a minute to start up. If your container is starting in a milliseconds, then it will start sooner. So, just giving it one more minute. Refreshing service details. Right now also, this is the only service that is serving 100 percent traffic and the build is in progress. Let's again this. In the meantime, do I have any questions uh, with regards to cloud? Yes, sure. Yes. So the thing was with GitHub Actions, right? you also no, no, that, yeah, that was GitHub Actions and it was saying that. Uh, yeah, right. No, this is the cloud build screen. On uh, GitHub Actions, you are saying, seeing that there is a build running, but where is that build running? You see view more details on Google Cloud build and this is the, if I click on this again, uh, it takes me to this build screen. Sorry, this is my other profile that, this is actually my primary profile and that is why it gets activated. Yeah, this is the build screen that comes up here and uh, for, for the sake of this demo, our build is running in Cloud build and that is why this, it could have been GitHub Actions as well. Uh, okay, the build is successful. Let us go back here. The, his, the revision has been updated here. 
and this is serving 100% traffic okay if i go here what should it do it should change the color to green and it has changed the color to green i did not have to do anything except wait for a few minutes but let's say i deployed a green deployment and i want to i don't want it to show it to my 100% users i just want to show it to a very small percentage of my users to test it out uh, this is called canary if you are aware of it if you were a kubernetes developer or if you have worked with istio as well you know you would write a virtual service split the traffic between these two and it would be uh, if you are familiar with it good but it will still be a long task but if you are using this ui you just have to select the traffic percentage you want to give uh, i want to give this version this cub second version 90% of my traffic which is the blue version and the latest one only 10% so when i deploy only 10% people see i can see the reaction get the feedback uh, get the metrics and then uh make it live to 100% i if i just change it 100 then again 100% uh, people will be saying this so let's try this i'm saving this it is change the revisions traffic automatically see it is green right now once this uh, traffic split has been done yeah which has been done now i'm seeing uh, i'll i'm just showing you how I, uh, the number of times i'm refreshing this to show the max people will be seeing only blue deployment and one out of 10 people will see the green one uh, we just saw green but i refreshed it so and if i want to roll back i could just change the traffic percentage again to zero and put this as 100 so and how can i uh, measure the success of my uh, green deployment i have my metrics also available over here the request count request latencies container startup lead latency all the metrics that you would want to have in one place when you are running containers uh this was about deploying from github and how you can do advanced things like uh, blue green deployment and uh, canary testing ab testing through just this same ui uh and and uh, get your container to production in seconds uh this is the managed traffic that i said if i now select 100% and just say that all traffic should again go to 100% i could do this as well uh you basically would want to taint it yeah you can do that let's say i uh, put a tag to this revision and i say blue okay uh now the new url which i will have for this url will have a blue tag in the beginning so this is a https endpoint that is available to everybody if i click on this it is successfully showing green because we just changed the percentage but now if i go to this blue tick and you could share this with your user base that this is the url use this url or you could map it to a custom domain saying uh, you know you should only use xyz.com and not anything else in that scenario the this is blue say hi to cloud run when i go to this i am only going to see blue or whatever changes are available on this deployment right now you see this revision is not serving any traffic it is 0% over here but if i just want to give it to a certain number of users when i launch a product i would want to do it for a small set of people in that scenario i could give the url and then share it with people uh, i could change the uh, code to say uh, not instead of blue i could just call it test as well so that everybody is clear yeah yeah then in that scenario uh, you don't even have to wipe it off right now this is the url uh, that most people will have right and you don't have to change the url every time if you want to promote this second revision this test one to 100% users you will just say that 100% uh, traffic should go to this test and revision 2 should be latest one should get zero so not latest one let's say this should this is again the same thing maybe say let me select i don't know see uh, it will only deploy what has been merged to your master now conflict and all will be at the developer level if you merge something and i want to yeah so then then we will need to uh, uh, you know uh, merge the so resolve the conflict and then uh, from a core point of view this is just going to say master it has deployed something i need to run it in production okay uh, yeah i mean i know merge conflicts can be an issue where, with developers uh okay all right i will go back to my slides then just for a quick summary the key takeaway is just discussing them very quickly we could run our code and deploy it in seconds we have streamlined ci cd 
uh, pushing to GitHub. And if you want to have manual approvals, you could add that as well in your trigger itself. Uh, zero conflict deployments, we did not touch any YAML files. Uh, even though I would want to show you that it just builds a YAML file on top of Knative for you to view as well. If you want to, if you are very YAML, if you're a YAML fan person and you want to change stuff through YAML, then you can do that. There's no server, man server management, of course. And there's the extensibility of Knative where you could do advanced things like Canary or A-B testing, blue-green deployments through Cloud Run. Uh, with this, thank you. And uh, I'm very pleased to have spoken at Gij today. We have the Cloud Hero Challenge. I've already spoken about it, which is also on Cloud Run. So if you have seen this demo, you may want to try it out and win some prizes over here. This is a little QR code that you can scan, scan to be a part of Google's Innovators program. And join the Google Cloud family. Thank you.